Hello everyone and welcome to this integrated session. Hello everyone and welcome to this integrated session between PSM and dermatology. And today we will be covering sexually transmitted diseases. I am Dr. Kushbu Mahajan, your dermatology guru who would be covering the dermatological aspect and with me I have I am Dr. Neha and I will be taking the epidemiology and the control of STDs. So, as the name suggests, sexually transmitted diseases are diseases which are transmitted through sexual routes. It is a vast topic and so today we would be mainly covering the genital ulcer diseases. Yeah, so as you can see, uh, we will be covering syphilis, herpes, chancroid, LGV and donovanosis. These are the five main causes of genital ulcer with which the patient presents and which you also get in the exam. So, as you can see here, when you talk about epidemiology in PSM, for any particular disease, we have to consider the host factor, we have to consider the agent, the mode of transmission. So, uh, considering all the genital ulcers, if you look at the age, mostly presenting between 24 to 29 years, okay, uh, even it can be between 15 to 25 years. If you talk about the sex, now the morbidity is more among males. Uh, marital status is very very important here considering uh, broken homes or women who are divorced or even couples who are divorced okay they indulge into unsafe sexual practices leading to STDs and socioeconomic status now we all know that it could affect anyone but you predominantly see it in the lower socioeconomic class all right now uh, with STDs again one of the thing that holds high importance is the social factors so look at the social factors prostitution broken homes disharmony among the uh, couples and it's a way now like people are indulging into unsafe sexual practices considering it as an easy money emotional immaturity urbanization social disruption so these are some of the social factors which is leading to an increase in the prevalence of STD today time all right now so let's first start with syphilis we all know the agent for syphilis is trepanosis pallidum. Treponema pallidum is a bacteria and is something which causes syphilis based on the inoculum size of it. Yeah and moving forward mode of transmission you very well know it's sexual contact also it transmits from the mother to the baby. Types it can be congenital as well as acquired. Now, for any disease, you have to talk about the incubation period. So, we all know syphilis can present in the form of primary, secondary and tertiary. So, primary syphilis, the incubation period is 10 to 90 days, secondary 2 to 12 weeks and tertiary syphilis, it takes years if it's left untreated. So, this is the natural course of syphilis. When the patient is exposed to treponema pallidum, one third gets infected and usually develops a primary lesion called as chancre in 10 to 90 days. Such a large incubation period variation is dependent on the inoculum size of treponema pallidum. Further, if not treated, they land up into the secondary stage, the incubation period of which is 2 to 12 weeks. Further, if untreated leads to latent phase, which may either relapse or go into the late latent phase. The late latent phase would eventually either go under remission or as Dr. Neha said, if left untreated after years, a patient can develop tertiary syphilis. So, this is the natural course if the patient does not take treatment uh, when he or she gets infected. Now, the different stages of syphilis are important. We will briefly touch on them. So, primary syphilis is something which we told you happens 10 to 90 days post infection. The classical lesion of primary syphilis is called as chancre. This is also referred to as hard chancre or hunterian chancre. Why hard or hunterian? Because the base is indurated. Classical features of chancre, it is painless, it has a very, very clean base and it has an indurated base. So, any ulcer which presents with painless, indurated base, think of syphilis. Primary syphilis, if not treated, treponema pallidum goes into the blood leading to spirochetemia and this now disseminates into various tissues through bloodstream leading to secondary syphilis. Now, secondary syphilis is as I have written is called as great imitator. Now, treponema pallidum has traversed into the bloodstream and so here you can get skin manifestations, you can get mucosal involvement, you can get lymph node involvement or you can get even systemic features. So, this, these constellation of features can be seen in lot of systemic disorders and so it is considered a great imitator. Patient has lot of constitutional symptoms also. Important skin features, you have something which we call as syphilids here. Syphilid 
as the name suggests, is an id reaction which is happening in syphilis. So, as the teponema pallidum traverses in blood, you get various type of skin lesions. Most of these skin lesions are painless, non-itchy and asymptomatic. They are rose colored and they may present either as macules, they can present as papules, they can present as lichenoid lesions, but never will they present as vesicles or bullae. Two very, very important features of secondary syphilis is you see hyperpigmented macules on palms and soles. In fact, in most of the exams, you get an image like this when they want to talk to you about secondary syphilis. This is called as B.O. sign or Bushke Ollendorf sign. Sometimes the papules, when present in intertriginous areas, they get macerated, leading to formation of these moist ulcer looking lesions, though they are not ulcers, they are macerated papules. And these are called as condyloma lata. So, these are important features that you see in secondary syphilis. When we talk about investigations of syphilis, the investigation would depend on identification of the organism. We can do some serological test or ancillary test. So, coming to the first test, which is dark brown microscopy, usually done from a chancre, a lymph node or condyloma lata. Now, treponema pallidum cannot be stained. So, this is a special test how we visualize this bacteria. So, we do a dark brown microscopy under which they appear as fluorescent looking slender wavy organisms. When the patient passes into the secondary phase or even sometimes in primary phase, serological tests are of great help. There are of two types, treponemal or specific test, which are specific tests. So, if positive, we know that it is syphilis and they stay positive throughout the life. So, they do not help in monitoring the treatment of the patient. The common specific tests are TPHA and FTABS. FTABS is one of the first tests to get positive. Non-treponemal test includes VDRN and RPR. They are more sensitive and more readily available test. How do we treat syphilis? Benzathine penicillin is the drug of choice. We need weekly injections uh, in cases of tertiary and uh, late latent syphilis. In the other forms of syphilis, which is primary, secondary and early latent, you need a single dose of benzathine penicillin. Yeah, so like ma'am said, this is of course ma'am very important for uh, all your examinations. Alright, so the next set of genital ulcers, we'll be talking about chancroid. Again, to start with, we all know the agent is Haemophilus tucri. Yeah, and uh, considering the mode of transmission, we are talking about sexually transmitted disease. So, of course, it is sexual contact. And along with that, all the other social factors that we have discussed before, low socioeconomic status, overcrowding, all of that is again responsible for chancroid 2. And incubation period is around 3 to 5 days. So, see, the incubation period is quite short here as compared to syphilis. So, mostly when we are talking about a chancroidal ulcer, we compare it to a syphilitic ulcer. Short incubation period and what did I tell you? Syphilis was painless. This is painful. Here, the base is very soft. It is non-indurated. So, it's also called as soft chancre. The edges, if you see, are very undermined edges. It's not a clean looking base. So, Single or multiple ulcers may be present, they are painful, they have non-indurated base and they have a very, very dirty looking base along with painful lymphadenopathy called as bubosa present. An important investigation that you do in uh, Haemophilus ducri or chancroid is a gram stain. It is a gram negative bacilli which when you see on gram stain, they are arranged in chain called as cool of fish appearance or railroad track appearance. This is the test that we commonly do in clinical practice. However, you can culture the organism in Muller, Hinton, agar medium. Treatment is a single dose of azithromycin 1 gram or you can even give IM cef triaxone 250 milligram. Okay, so that was chancroid. Now moving to the next one is uh, another set of genital ulcers. We'll talk about lymphogranuloma venereum. Now agent you all know, as you're aware of, is chlamydia trachomatis. And uh, again, the mode of transmission over here is sexual contact. The same social factors that we've discussed before are responsible for this. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. That's a very valid point. Now, an important thing about LGV is though we have clubbed it under genital ulcer disease, the ulcer here is transient. Patient usually will not come to you with ulcer. The LGV transmits through lymphatic drainage. So, what we usually get are painful inguinal lymphadenopathy called as bubos. These bubos are multiloculated. So, when the patient is walking into your clinic, he'll limp while walking because there will be a painful swelling which will be there in his inguinal or femoral area. So much so that if it's left untreated, it can lead to lymphatic complications like sexophone penis in males and esthiomene in females. 
It is difficult to detect this bacteria as we all know chlamydia is difficult to detect. So, here we do serological test and nucleic acid amplification test. The treatment involves using doxycycline or azithromycin but they are given for a longer period of time in LGV. Okay, moving ahead the next set of genital ulcers we will be covering herpes. Again, you all know the uh, agent responsible is herpes simplex virus. And how does it present? Now, HCV again has a peculiar presentation. You usually do not see an ulcer here again. What you see are these coalescing vesicles. You see these vesicles. So, these are fluid filled vesicles which are coalescing together. They will rupture to form these coalescing erosions. They are extremely painful. They will have painful lymphadenopathy and a very, very important thing about herpes genitalis is its tendency to recur. So, patient will come to you either with the primary episode or will come and tell you that I have had repeated episodes of these painful lesions. However, the secondary episodes are less symptomatic than the primary episodes. You do a simple Zang smear and you see multinucleated giant cells. You can even go for serology and treatment is simple. You give acyclovir and this is for primary episodes, you give it for 7 to 10 days and for secondary episodes, you usually give it for 5 to 7 days. And so, that was beautifully put and I hope we've all been able to convey to you the clinical features and all the diagnostic modalities as well. Now, coming to one of the things which is very, very important is the control of STDs. And now, as you can see, we've listed down five prime intervention strategies that we can do. The first one, of course, you all are aware of is case detection. The second one is case holding and treatment, epidemiological treatment, personal profile access. And the last one, in fact, is the most important, I would say, one of the things is health education which is quite lacking and we need to uh, spread awareness about this even more. So, the first one let's start with is case detection. Now, um, ma'am, as you're also aware that uh, primarily we do screening, right? The patient is not yet presenting with any signs and symptoms, but we'll try to, you know, by organizing routine screening programs, we would try to detect the person in the asymptomatic stage as well only. Now, what are the high risk populations? Like ma'am said, uh, if you talk about syphilis again, when the mother presents, when the pregnant female comes to the OPD, we do the VDRL, she's turned out to be positive, okay? So, one high risk population again is the pregnant female, people who are donating blood, even um, you know people who are uh, indulging into unsafe sexual practices, be it commercial sex workers, you are trying to focus on them. So, screening, we are all know what is the purpose of screening, early case detection and providing timely treatment. That is very, very important. All right. Now, when you talk about screening, like we've taught you before also, for STDs particularly guys, we can have something known as contact tracing and we can have something known as cluster testing. Now, both of these are important for your MCQs also. So, let us see once contact tracing is very easy and it's a very important thing. You have to identify, locate, investigate and treat the sexual partners of the diagnosed patients. All right. It's one of the most effective methods for controlling the spread of STDs. And like ma'am said, being a clinician, whenever uh, she also gets a case of STD, we have to make sure that the partner is tested. All right. Next one is cluster testing. Now, what's the difference between contact tracing and cluster testing? So, cluster testing is basically screen all individuals within the socio-sexual network or community where an index case is identified. Now, what is an index case? The first case that comes to the notice of an investigator. So, all the people who are uh, having a similar background, if suppose we come across an index case, we need to ensure that everyone who's residing in that community, okay, is with that same background should get tested. So, that is cluster testing. This, okay. Now, what is case holding and treatment basically we have to ensure that we provide adequate treatment of patients and their contacts okay sometimes uh, ma'am even before uh, you know the lab result has come out we should start the treatment absolutely yeah. so dr neha is right so when we you uh, when we treat a patient in std clinic so that's why we have those uh, std kits and sometimes if you look at the treatment it's so simple is it from mycin one gram single dose why do we keep this treatment simple because we know an std patient may not be compliant he or she will not come back so try to give them the treatment then and there in fact sometimes we tell them to eat the medicine then and there so that uh, the treatment actually goes into the society yeah like they might just disappear, you yeah. know, because there's so much of stigma also associated yeah. with this set of STDs, they might not turn up. So, this one is really important, case holding and treatment. Ensure the treatment then and there. 
Okay, now what is epidemiological treatment? It's not very different. It's the same like contact treatment where you administer full therapeutic dose of treatment to persons who've recently been exposed to STDs while awaiting the result. Okay, so it's almost the same epidemiological. Also, if you come across anybody in the community presenting with that coming to our, um, uh, you know, STD clinics, we have to ensure timely treatment. They take it then and there. So this is very important. You do not have to wait for the results. Please treat the patient on what you think is the clinical diagnosis of the patient. And obviously, you can utilize some staining methods which are readily available in the OPD and look at the slides. Okay, now personal profile access, again, we all know that to stay protected from STDs, we have to advise as well as use contraceptives. Yes, use of contraceptives will prevent these STDs from happening and for this is what is needed is health education. Yeah, so this uh, uh, is what we ensure that people adopt a healthy behavior and sustain it, right? So we have to promote the use of contraceptives. Now, as you all are aware, um, high risk groups for STDs or HIV, we all know as commercial sex workers, right? Now, commercial sex workers are provided uh, female condoms are being provided to commercial sex workers freely under which program? Under National AIDS Control Program. That again is to ensure the safety of them also as well as their clients, right? So that is also known as a targeted interventions for health education. Particularly our program, National AIDS Control Program is also monitoring STDs and for that they are ensuring that safe sexual practices are adopted by everyone and we are promoting the use of contraceptives for that. Yeah, one more thing guys, supportive measures, you do get a question on this also, STI clinics have been uh, developed at district block as well as first referral unit levels, where of course, syndromic approach for STDs is being utilized where we have the seven kits and like ma'am said, based on that, we definitely start the treatment and we ensure that the patient takes the treatment. Counseling is a must. Also guys, you all are aware that in uh, community medicine to, you know, catch hold of the diseases, systematically report them, what is the type, how are we notifying the cases by the system of surveillance? Now, you all know we have active, passive and sentinel surveillance. Active surveillance is when we are going house to house searching for diseases like in the case of malaria, leprosy, right? Passive is hospital reporting that against is feasible. Now, for STDs, what do you do? STDs, you can't go house to house. The health worker can't go, right? Passive, not every hospital is reporting STDs. So, what was the surveillance that we are doing to uh, tackle STDs, to find the cases of STDs? If you remember, sentinel surveillance. That again is very, very important because from particular sites that serve as sentinel sites, we are trying to take up the prevalence of this particular disease. Very, very important. Yeah, and last, like we've also spoken about the health programs are taking initiative to control STD along with Ministry of Health. The important thing is which program is directly dealing with it. You must know this National AIDS Control Program. Uh, what is it doing? It is initiating syphilis screening treatment as well as partner management. How is maternal and child health coming here? How is our RMN CAH plus N coming here? By ensuring antenatal screening. We cannot miss out any pregnant woman. We cannot uh, miss out screening her for all the important diseases like one is syphilis, HIV, right? Multi-purpose screening, okay, which we do for a pregnant woman and of course community outreach. In fact, I would say, you know, this ma'am, I feel is one of the most important thing where your community health workers, like we are in the OPD, okay, if I'm a public health specialist, I'm at the field, but I don't belong, I am not from that community. So our health workers have to be given that responsibility to reach out to the people to show that they care and this is one of the most important thing to make it a non-stigmatizing uh, disease. Yes, because they can speak in their language, they can yes. understand what practices are being followed and so this I think, yes, you're very right, it's the most important thing. So guys, here we wrap up. I hope you enjoyed this session. I thoroughly enjoyed it and it was a wonderful idea integrating clinical with epidemiological aspects of STDs. Yeah, even uh, it was very uh, nicely. I hope that you were able to get this and uh, do try to uh, take up points from this session and uh, all the very best. Thank you. Okay.